Besides that, this promise wards off from us the most terrible calamity that could possibly occur to us. It may help to make this promise increasingly precious to us if we think for a minute what would become of us if God did leave us or forsake us. Then indeed might the heavens be hung with blackness and the light of the sun be put out forever if God should leave us. The straight road to hell would be open before us and we should soon be going thither if we were forsaken of God. It would have been far better never to have been born or never to have known the way of life at all then. After all, to be deserted of God and to be left to perish. Thank God that can never be the portion of anyone who has truly trusted in him. To recollect also that if he had not been God, he would have forsaken us long ago. Our patience with our fellow creatures holds out but a very little while. But it is because God is God and therefore changes not that we are not consumed. Have you not done a thousand times enough to have made him forsake you if he were like the sons of men? I confess sorrowfully that I know I have. And if he could turn from his eternal purpose, and if his everlasting love could change, then surely he would long ago have cast my poor soul far away from his presence to receive its well-deserved punishment. Is it not a blessed thing to think that the very thing that is most to be feared by any man can never happen to a believer? For God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Thou dost well deserve to be forsaken of God, but he will never leave thee. He will deal with thee in the way of grace and not of justice. If he left thee, thou wouldst utterly perish, but he will not and cannot do so. Thou art too dear to him for his heart ever to turn away from thee. And while this promise averts from us the direst ill, it secures to us the richest possible blessing to have God with us is there anything beneath the sky is there anything above the sky that is a choicer blessing than that to be with God and to have God with us in the very heaven of heavens and he who hath this blessing here hath a veritable heaven upon earth no other blessings can ever be compared with this one no mirth of them that make merry in the dance or of those who shout by reason of wine can ever be likened to the holy excitement and enthusiasm of a soul that is in the presence of God and knows that it is there. To be helped of God, which is the second part of the promise, is bliss indeed. What better help than that? Does anyone need? We are glad to be helped by our fellow Christians who have the ability to aid us. But to be helped of God is to have the exchequer of heaven and the great deeps of divine omnipotence to draw upon. Whatsoever it is that we really need, we already have if God be with us, for no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The best of blessings are secured to the man to whom God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Then, beloved friends, this is a promise that only God could give. The husband whispers in the ear of his wife, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But he forgets the hour of death when he must go from all below. The mother, as she presses her child to her bosom, says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But she knows not how soon that little child may be an orphan to need another's care. Friend says to friend, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, forgetting how changeable human friendships are, for many are the hearts that have been rent asunder by vows honestly whispered at the time, which have been forgotten through the lapse of years or have been treacherously broken. 
I will never leave thee nor forsake thee is not a promise for mortal lips to utter. Transient beings like ourselves must not venture to say, I will never do this or that. For alas, we know not what we may do or may not do. Even though we think we shall never prove to be traitors, yet traitors we may prove to be, or if not traitors, our power may fail so that we shall be unable to do what we have promised. But when Jehovah says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, it is a divine promise, and he who utters it divinely keeps it. Tis a fit promise for God to speak, and tis a fit promise for God's servants to hear. You have lost many of those dear to you, but you have not lost your God. They have gone from you one by one as star by star grows dim, but his light still shines on and shall shine on forever. Further, beloved, this choice promise provides against all troubles. We do not know what troubles may come upon us. Let us not think about them. They will come soon enough. And it will be quite sufficient for us to trouble ourselves about them when they do come. But whatever they may be, he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There may come to us great losses. Our riches may take to themselves wings and fly away. Where we had large estates, we may be without a place whereon to lie our head. But he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We may be the victims of cruel slanders. And under the pressure of those slanders, those that used to respect us may avoid us, and former friends may be alienated from us. But he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We may have to suffer great pain, and the earthly physician may be unable to relieve us. But God's promise will still avail for us, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Sore sinking of heart may come upon us, and all God's waves and billows may roll over us, but he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. In the course of our service for God, we may meet with many difficulties. Where we looked for helpers, we may find opponents. But let us still press onward, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We may have to remove to distant lands, but he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Days of weakness may come to us when the pillars of the house shall tremble, when they that look out of the windows shall be darkened and the grinders shall fail because they are few. The infirmities of old age may tell upon us, but he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And with old age may come the loss of children and friends till we seem left like the last rose of summer or the last sere leaf of the woods in the autumn. And yet he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And then shall come the chill river of death and the gathering darkness of the night. But he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And after that shall come another world where our spirit shall fly through tracks unknown and where new and wondrous scenes shall burst upon our astonished view. And in the fullness of time, Christ shall come and the last great battle shall be fought. But whatever is to be or is not to be, a Christian has nothing to fear for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. 
Come forth, thou dragon bound with the chain, and ravage the world again, if so it must be. Rise, Antichrist, from thy den amidst the seven hills. Pollute the churches once again, if thou canst. Let war and bloodshed, famine and pestilence break loose again with unwanted fury. But whatever happens in time or in eternity, he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Therefore, Will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? If the Lord of hosts is with us, what ground can there be for fear? I know of no supposable dangers, no imaginable troubles, no conceivable difficulties through which and out of which and beyond which this text will not carry us. If by faith we grasp it, he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee.